Right. Are we started? I'm just waiting. Has the webcast started yet? Just waiting for confirmation from my colleagues. Just to... Yes, we're, we're live now. Right. Can I therefore welcome everybody to the Mulvey Local Committee meeting on Wednesday, the 9th of December. In line with the government guidance, this meeting will not will not be held in public, in physical public, for the, for the social distancing. But we are allowed to hold the meeting remotely, and this meeting is available for, the, for public viewing. I would like to remind all participants that you, that you have had the rules around this meeting and how it will be run, and please abide by them if possible. It will be more difficult to manage digitally than in person. I hope the internet connections hold up. In the case of my internet connection running out, the vice chairman, Stephen Cooksey, will be taken over until I re reconnect. Um, well, we hope so, because he, if he joins us. Um, before we start, I will introduce the officers who will be presenting reports to today's, followed by the members of the committee in the meeting. So to start with, we have Zena Carey, who is the area highway manager. I know Zena's there, I can see her somewhere. And we have Duncan Knox, who is the Road Safety and Active Travel Team Manager. Good afternoon. Yes, good. Uh, and I'll read out the members of the committee now and introduce you. Please, could you indicate that you are here so that we have confirmation at this meeting? Uh, right. Stephen Cooksey. Yes, here. Yeah. Oh, good. Claire Curran. Hello, Tim. Yes, I am here. Helen Clack. Oh, yes. Just in the lobby. Helen Clark, Helen, are you there? We'll come back in a minute. Chris Townsend, who I know is here. Absolutely, Timothy. Would I not be? No, of course not. Hazel Watson, who is definitely here as well. I am here, Hazel Watson. Good. Um, Mary Huggins. I'm here. Mary Huggins. Raj Hack. This is Nancy Goodacre. I'm substituting for Nancy. It's Councillor. Oh, Caroline, Caroline Sanderson. Mm -hmm. Claire Malcolmson, who I'm sure is here. I am. It's Hello. Great. Good to see you. And David Hawksworth, have you made it through the system? Just just about. Yes, if I've been let in. It's that I was waiting to be let in. Oh, right, David. And Helen, you're there? Hello, Claire. I'm here on my uh, I, hi Tim. I'm in. I'm on my iPhone, but no one's let me in on my main computer. I don't know what's going on really. It says you're in on both, Helen. So I'm not. I'm not sure. Well, it's not. Yeah. Okay, so I'm on my iPhone at the moment. I'll try leaving and coming back in on my computer again. Right. That makes sense. I think it gets confused if you're doing both. I think. Well, right. Exactly. Oh, okay. No, if you just had to drop by, just need to use the name and password. All right, thanks. Bye. Right. In terms of voting on items of this meeting, at the end of the discussion, I will ask committee members if they are in support of the recommendations. I will assume members are in support of the recommendations unless you indicate otherwise or have indicated that in the chat function that you are not supportive of the recommendations. That plenty of time for you to do this. I'll remind all members the chat box function is available and should be used to indicate if you wish to speak if the raise your hand button is not available general points for discussion raised within the chat box will not be included as part of the meeting where they are subject of foi requests so it's best to verbalize these points the chat will be monitored throughout by the chairman and the com committee manager please note this meeting is being streamed live via a webcast so you can find the webcast on the link on the local committee page for members of the public who have not who have joined us in the meeting because you've submitted a written question or petition. Once your item is finished, you're welcome to leave the meeting by hanging up the call. Right, move on to the, that's the agenda. Um, apologies for absence. We have apologies for absence from Nancy Goodacre, who's being substituted by Caroline Salmon and Rosemary Dixon. Uh, the minutes of the previous meeting on 17th of June, are they agreed? Agreed. 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 Are there any declarations of interest? No, I don't think there's any of those. Right, yes. which brings... Oh, sorry, oh. sorry, Tim, Hazel has a hand up. Hazel, sorry. Um, I, uh, under item 5B on the petition, I would like to uh, have interest as a governor of the Washington School. 
Right. Well, that's not a pecuniary interest, is it? Right. right. Can I just say, say to Mr. Chairman, there is a lot of feedback um, from as if there are two people in a one place. Yes, I was going to say there. Are, if everybody could mute their microphone if they're not on the call and speak at that moment, it would be greatly appreciated by everybody. Tim, can you make sure that my, the, my iPhone is hung up? So I'm on my computer now, but I need someone to kick me out of so the my iPhone. Right. Oh, Democratic Services for that? Correct. We can see you in your, on your device. I think that's hung up now, hasn't it, Helen? You seem to have left on, on your phone. I think, I, I don't know, my iPhone seems to have broken over this because I am still getting it on my iPhone. But my, anyway, just carry on and I'll try and sort it out. Right. Right. Uh, public questions, 4A. We've received seven different public questions. The responses are published in supplementary papers. Responses have been sub uh, circulated to the residents who asked them. So taking each question in turn. If any of the residents who put these questions at the meeting and have a supplementary question, please, please indicate. Right. Well, question one is Caroline Salmon. So, I, Caroline. I, I do have a supplementary question on, on this, yes. Right. Well, please ask it. OK. Um, the original question was about the bumps on the A24, which have caused a considerable amount of concern to residents. Um, there's two sets of bumps northbound, uh, which is um, between Spook Hill and North Homewood. And that one has been repaired, but it's made it worse. And southbound, where it goes under Bregstall's Lane, um, which I reported because a serious accident occurred outside my house. Um, the. The responses are that um, the southbound, the northbound will be in a scheme for future consideration, but not prioritised until 2021. And that the southbound is on a um, is not on a, a list other than for the sort of standard maintenance repairs. So my my response to that is to thank the officers for the response. But. Um, bearing in mind what I'd already asked, I still remain concerned that these bumps could cause accidents in inclement weather. And I'm surprised that the southbound, although at a level two years behind the northbound, um, is only going to be looked at for surface gestion. So do the officers now have a full understanding of what is causing this increasingly worsening subsidence? And are they certain that doing nothing until after 2021 will be a safe solution? considering that a substantial number of skid marks and scratches are on the road and have appeared during this summer. Zena, do you want to respond to that? Uh, th thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Councillor Salmon. Uh, the uh, whole of that area has had uh, a detailed investigation, including um, of the culvert that goes underneath the road, um, not exactly in that position, but further away, slightly further away. Um, in answer to your question about um, how do we manage the risk on a road, uh, that the road has frequent uh, highway safety inspections, um, and it's also had that assessment for the condition of it. So at the moment, and I appreciate that it's disappointing that it doesn't um, prioritise above other requests and other roads. Um, however, it does receive those um, safety inspections and we will continue to monitor it until it prioritises. Thank you. Hmm. Right. Question two is from James Friend, who is, n is not attending. There was a, a supplementary from him, wasn't there, Jess? Which basically, I think, asked to be updated when the meeting had taken place is that correct yeah yeah that's that's basically all he's asked if he could be updated when when the meeting and the response had uh, had happened good yes th thank you chairman of course we, we will update councillor friend thank you right um 
Third question is from John Arnold. Hello. Hello. I'm here. Hello. Yes. Hello. I'm sorry I couldn't get my camera to work. Um, and I'm John Arnold. I've recently been appointed the chair of the Mole Valley Cycle Forum. Congratulations. Um, thank you. And uh, we uh, prepared a question uh, for the committee and uh, had a response. We have a supplementary. Uh, is it appropriate to Please. include that at this point? And uh, I will send this through uh, to through on the email uh, for the sake of the minutes as well. And <clears throat> our supplementary is this, that uh, it's now uh, nearly 2021 and there's at the moment no date for commencement of an LCWIP for Mole Valley. Only rather a vague statement we feel that other areas of the county, including Mole Valley, will follow uh, Rygate and Banstead in due course. Uh, without an LCWIP, Mole Valley, we understand, will not be eligible for any government funding for cycling and walking improvements. And as the forum, uh, we do actually have um, what we would like to say is oven ready proposals for a workshop and we would very much appreciate a firm date uh, being identified for such a workshop which could be part of the process and contribute into the LCWIP. We would very much welcome members uh, of the local committee their views uh, on the supplementary and the original question. Thank you. Zena, do you have an answer to that? Because there was bits of a council answer yesterday for it as well, interestingly. Yes, uh, th thank you, Chairman. Uh, and thank you for your um, supplementary question, Mr Arnold. Um, uh, I'll let you, um, Chairman, if you if you would like to give that update from, from council. Well, there uh, was... But... Sorry, sorry, Zena, keep going. No. Um, at the council meeting, the, there were the first three were... Um, first three LCWIPs were, were um, diaried, uh, which were basically one every four months, I'm tempted to say, from after the Rygate uh, one, which was Elmbridge and I think Runnymede were the next ones. And they were roughly every four months. Is that correct? Right. Yes, that, that that's absolutely correct. So uh, there is um, a, a great deal of uh, goodwill um, towards creating these, um, but they are quite expensive and they are quite resource intensive. Um, so we can't roll them out to everywhere all at once, um, but there is a rolling program. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have a date at this time um, for you, Mr. Arnold. However, it's really useful to receive um, your uh, as you describe them, oven ready projects. And I'd welcome if you would like to send those through to us. They they wouldn't at this time be part of that LC WIP process, but they're still um, of great benefit to us so that we can help inform uh, what the local community and the local cycling groups um, might be looking for. So that we'd be gratefully receive those. Thank you. Uh, Duncan Knox, do you want to add to that? Yes, thank you, Chair. Just a point of clarification. I noticed in the question from Mr Arnold that um, there was the assertion that Mole Valley was left out in, in the recent funding round, which is not correct because one of the uh, potential schemes is uh, a cycle path from the Longbridge roundabout down near Gatwick up to Westvale Park roundabout along the A217, which is wholly within Mole Valley and uh, will be taking up a substantial portion of that funding pot. So uh, Mole Valley will be punching above its weight in that sense. And presumably from what you've said, actually, we can still get funding from the active travel schemes. That doesn't depend on having one of these yet, plans in place yet. Correct. <clears throat> Right. Well, that's helpful because there are several floating around the north of the district, I know, which Sina has listed and you have listed, I hope, somewhere between you. Th thank you. And uh, uh, Chairman, I would be really grateful if I could just point out to everybody that we we have got a series of schemes that are currently up on Commonplace on our website and uh, residents and um, groups that have a great deal of interest um, and anybody who might just wish to comment. Um, can go onto our website 
and, and leave their comments and and give any feedback that they might have about some of the proposals that have already been um, submitted. Thank you. Mr. Arnold. Um, do you like Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think it would be really helpful for um, folks uh, on the forum and other stakeholders who have a, a really committed interest in this if there is a schedule available that we can then plan towards uh, for the uh, LC WIP process so that uh, we can make sure that we're fully prepared and make as constructive uh, an input as possible into that. Um, uh, Chair, if, if that would be possible to share with us, that would be really helpful. And of I course, um, we will, um, to, to Zina Curry's point, ensure that um, the projects that we have up and ready uh, are sent through to her uh, for consideration. Well, that's very helpful. I think the challenge is that nobody's written the schedule yet. I ah. think that's actually the point. <laughs> but we, well, as soon as it is available, we will definitely put it out to everybody. Yeah. But I have a feeling from what I've read so far that it's not actually – the schedule has th three out of 11 listed and it's not actually finished yet. I think that might be the challenge. But we shall try and keep it, keep everybody communicated too. So thank you very much. That's very helpful. Right. The fourth question is from Rosemary Hobbs. Not sure is here. Uh, sorry. Yes, I am oh, here. You are. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, I just unmuted. Um, yes, my question follows Caroline's really. It's also about the A24 in the southern section uh, from the North Homewood roundabout to Bear Green. And I represent a, a group of uh, residents who are very concerned about speed and noise on that section of the road. And my question was, uh, asking about traffic calming measures and what is scheduled on that section of the road, uh, in particular uh, suggestions such as reduction to a single lane, as at Mickleham Bends, or extending the 40 mile an hour speed limit, given the uh, welcome speed reduction agreed on Deep Dean Avenue. Um, so thank you for the reply. Um, my, I do have a supplementary, which Please. is to ask um, uh, when there are concerns about speeding vehicles, um, how should residents inform Surrey County Council and the police uh, that they have these concerns, given that obviously uh, if we have speeding motorbikes causing a great deal of noise, they've gone by the time we could report them. So what's the mechanism for in, informing uh, when we have a particular concern? Right. Who wants to take that? Zena or Duncan? May, may I ask if Duncan goes first? Because um, and, and thank you, uh, Rosemary Hobbs, for your for your supplementary question. It really is gratefully appreciated. Before Duncan responds, can, can I say that um, uh, the, the chairman has already um, instigated some uh, community engagement about noise and speed of traffic, uh, and we are working with the police to try and address some of those issues. But uh, I'll let my colleague Thank Duncan Knox respond on your specific supplementary question. Yeah, it'd be great if there are ongoing concerns over speeding, if you could report that via our website on the report it section and it will come through to our kind of highways customer service team. And then um, those will be allocated to ourselves to respond to. And what we will do is um, we add that to our list of sites where there have been concerns raised and um, it goes on our big uh, kind of spreadsheet database of where all the speed problem sites are. And we go and measure the level of speeds using equipment that we have um, and that feeds into the discussion we have with the police on which sites need the most attention taking into account the number of collisions and the level of public concern so um, if it's a specific incident regarding one particular vehicle then that would be best reported directly to the police by either phone or their website and if possible to take down the you know the the time and the date and, and the place and any details you can about the vehicle but i do accept that it wouldn't always be very easy to note down the number plate of a speeding vehicle as it's been and gone but at least the police will have 
Um, it will add to their intelligence of where the problems are taking place. And if it, it repeats itself at the same location, then maybe they can come and pay a visit. Uh, that that will be for them to 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 respond to on that particular point. So I guess there's specific incidents report to the police, an endemic ongoing problem. If you report it to us, then we will work with the police on what we can do to, to solve that. Thank you. Right. Uh, question five was from Roger Adams about Rectory Lane. Councillor Curran, do you want to? Yeah. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Is, Ms. is Councillor Adams not here to no. ask the supplemental? He's um, not. Right. OK, thank you. Well, um, I think he's raised a, um, a good question and one that residents do mention to me frequently. Um, that rectory lane is narrow and uh, has no pavement. This, um, as members will be aware, um, the design has been agreed for a traffic calming build out at the northern end, it's about a third of the way up on rectory lane. And one of the, uh, we very much hope that that will act um, as a sort of traffic calming measure in rectory lane. Clearly cars will have to slow to to manoeuvre it. It isn't its primary purpose, but it will have the result of slowing down the traffic in Rectory Lane um, as it approaches the narrow part. But one thing I would say is that this um, is that, as the response says, we have looked into a compulsory purchase to um, widen the road and put a pavement in Rectory Lane before, but the landowner um, is not willing to engage in that process, so it would be a long complicated and difficult legal avenue um, to, to, to pursue. Um, and also, as is mentioned in the written response, the only recent accident has been at the actual junction with low, the lower road, the A246. And one of the ways that that junction could be improved and some funds released to, to make some improvements in Rectory Lane would be through a Section 106 agreement were the Chalk Pit Lane Depot on the other side of the A246 to be developed and release some money through a developer. And that would help to upgrade the junction, which is um, a very difficult uh, junction there. And that would really come down to divisional members um, for Bookham working with planning officers at Mole Valley District Council to make sure that that um, was raised with them, working with the, the Surrey officers, and that that could be a condition of um, any future planning application that might be granted for that site. Um, other than that, I continue to work with officers to see if there are any mitigating, uh, mitigating steps that we can take at all to improve pedestrian safety in Rectory Lane. It is high on my priority list and that of the Bookham residents and one of which I'm well aware. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I think probably question six, Andrew Matthews. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, my question is regarding the Howard development in Effingham and the um, provision that Surrey County Council is making towards active travel. Um, so my supplementary question is the planned provision for cycling to the new Howard of Effingham School appears inadequate, with only 10% of students able to store their bicycles at the new school and with no dedicated cycle highway planned. This will result in cyclists competing with pedestrians on the shared path. Given the recent government drive for people to take up active travel, can Surrey County Council explain why there is not a better plan for sustainable transport to the new school when the, when the council recently applied for a £7.8 million grant to improve facilities elsewhere in the county? Uh, which officer would like to take that? Sina? Yes, uh, th thank you, Chairman, uh, and thank you, Mr Matthews. Um, we don't have officers from our transportation development um, and planning team here today, but we will take away your question. Um, but I would draw your attention to the last paragraph, um, 
that the school is increasing in size, um, but with improvements mentioned above, that's including the cycling improvements, it is considered that the proposed site has provided access to sustainable modes of transport for all future users, and importantly, safe access is being provided to the school. Um, we also look at um, the sort of facilities outside of school and in terms of the road safety outside schools as well. Um, but I absolutely agree. Um, we absolutely want to um, encourage active travel. It's an important part of our physical and mental health and well-being. So um, if you wouldn't mind if we um, respond to you separately uh, so that we can um, get you a, a more formal answer. But I, I see um, Councillor um, Claire Curran uh, wishes to come in on this. Thank you. Yes, Claire. Thank you. Your meal right. still. Thank you. I just wanted to say that um, as with Rectory Lane, um, access to the Howard, not just the Howard, but also Manor House School and to a lesser extent, um, uh, St Lawrence School at Effingham have long been a concern for people who live in Bookham and need to travel that way and is something that the Bookham Residents Association are acutely aware of as well. I must say that the Mole Valley uh, Cycle Forum have been engaged in recent upgrades that we made at the Preston Cross Roundabout um, and they were consulted there um, and have their, the, re the representations that the Cycle Forum make about access to the school are always listened to. Um, and I think Mr Matthews will know how difficult it is to make modifications along that section of Lower Road as it is relatively narrow and banked up on one side. However, um, just to reassure members of this committee that um, I understand that there is a, a separate working party on the Book and Residents Association that have been working up a plan for the active travel website um, on proposals to improve the cycling um, network to the Howard. I don't believe anything has yet come forward or been uploaded to the website. Um, part of that was part, one suggestion I know was a dedicated cycle lane along the lower road, but I don't know the outcome of uh, what was being suggested. And I look forward with interest to seeing what that working group might prepare, might have, um, might have be proposing, and to see what the proposals on the website are. And obviously, I will certainly be fully supportive of any any improved cycle safety for students. Right. Thank you. Questions. Question seven is Paul Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, and uh, thank you for the, the answer to my question. Um, th there's an implied rebuke in the in the response, uh, effectively saying, why do you why are you asking us for the data when you could look it up yourself on on crash map? And if that were implied, it would be unfair because actually the question I, I asked was, what does the Surrey Highways team see as the three main uh, accident hotspots? Um, I understand it was felt that, that was too subjective and therefore my question was changed. Um, uh, but uh, I mean, crash map it is, I, I had already looked at crash map and that was the reasons I put, put the question as I did originally. Uh, and it did show there were problems at roundabouts uh, and I'm grateful for the about, about this particular roundabout. I, just as Rome has seven hills, I think Fetcham has seven roundabouts, uh, and it did seem that there were problems at a lot of those roundabouts, uh, particularly as there's, there's often a, a slope heading down to them as, as we head down towards the mole. So I, I was interested in that, but my supplementary uh, is more about the road safety working group, which is which is referred to in the, in the response, because that seems to be where these issues are are really discussed uh, and can I have a bit more information about who is invited to, to those uh, working group meetings and how they are accountable do they produce who do they report who do they report to uh, I'm conscious particularly having uh, attended a quite an interesting community engagement forum uh, was it last week about Cleve Road that we were discussing uh, for quite a lot of that meeting what Thames Water might say and what Mole Valley might say, but neither of them were actually at the meeting. 
And so sometimes uh, I'm concerned that the right people aren't necessarily at the meeting. So so the supplementary is, who, uh, do we invite people like the Valley or the Cycling Forum to, to attend these meetings? Uh, and if not, who, who do they report to so that there is proper input to their considerations? Thank you. Sure, if I, if I may respond to that, Chair. Um, so the road safety working groups are hosted by my team, uh, which is the road safety and active travel team. And we invite police colleagues and area highways colleagues together. So it's officers uh, within the county council. And we have a £200,000 central budget for road safety improvements at casualty hotspots across the whole of county of Surrey. And what we do is have six monthly working group meetings for every one of the 11 boroughs and districts. And we do analysis of um, collision mapping, like similar to what you see on crashmap.co.uk. And where there are uh, clusters of collisions or patterns, then we bring those to the meeting with uh, an, an analysis of what we think the problem is and discuss that with the area highways colleagues who've got that local knowledge and with local police officers who are road safety specialists or who also have that, that local expertise to come up with um, diag a diagnosis of what the problem is and what the possible solutions are. We then pull together a long list of uh, potential schemes throughout the whole county and prioritise those based on um, the number of collisions for the amount of money spent type cost benefit uh, analysis. Um, so we're accountable to, to, to the cabinet member and if we have schemes that have uh, impinge greatly on a local area such as speed limits where the local committee uh, have delegated responsibility then we'll bring the proposals to the local committee uh, for their approval. Right. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, I will say also for last week's engagement, Thames Water were encouraged to come, but uh, we're, not, we're not available or willing to come, which was a, one of the interesting challenges of the world. Right. We now move on to member questions. Hazel, you have one. Um, yes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you very much indeed for the very full answer to my question, which is very uh, much appreciated. Um, my only comment is that um, it, it is a shame that when the resurfacing of part of the road was taken, took place in 2019, that the whole stretch uh, wasn't resurfaced at, at that time, which would probably be more cost effective to have done it all in one go. But, um, uh, you know, that's my only comment. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So we'll therefore move forward to item five. Petitions. We have two petitions in front of us today. So if we invite the first first one. The full wording of the petitions and the office response are available on the supplementary website. The first petition is to improve the safety on Newdigate Road for our, our school and children. And that's presented by Mr. James Bagudi. Mr. Mr. Bagudi. Would you like to, uh, you've got three minutes, after which Helen Clack, well, as the local member, will respond. So, if you'd like to start. We can't hear you. You're on mute. James, you're mute. Can you hear me now? Sorry. Yes. yes. That's Sorry, wonderful. Apologies. Thank you. That's all right. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Salmon and Councillor Clapp for their help. I'm a recent head teacher at um, the Weald Church of England Primary School, as I said, just off Newdigate Road. And um, in the short time I've been here, I have um, luckily avoided two... Um, what I would say would have been fatalities of children on Newdigate Road. Um, I don't know the area. You will know the area better than me. But Newdigate Road is very narrow. Um, it is adjacent to a major A road. And at the end of the road, there was a brick manufacturer's. 
So there is a, a heavy number of lorries passing on a, on a regular basis. And my key concern for the ch- children's safety is that quite often at the end of the school day, bearing in mind the road is very narrow, um, large numbers of um, parents congregate there and um, countless and sometimes they park in quite a a dangerous manner Uh, I often spend my time at the end of the school day outside uh, on that road encouraging them to park in a a more sensible fashion but space is very very limited Um, and and, uh, lorries often turn into that road blind there's a lack of signage um, and quite often children are trying to cross that road onto the common. Um, uh, and I can foresee a major, uh, sadly, a major fatality like it to happen unless something is done. Um, so um, the reason to bring this to your attention really is to, to look at possible, um, whether it be signage, um, or something which is going to one make uh, drivers and lorry drivers in particular and parents and local residents more aware of um, speed limits on that road um, trying to um, support as much as possible uh, um, a system whereby children can actually cross the road safely because at the moment they're coming out of that school coming to Newdigate Road, wanting to cross, and they're finding that yeah, it's literally a blind bend um, in the road. So I'm asking really for your support. Um, I've not been in this setting before, um, but I'm really asking for um, a possible next steps um, to try and support me and the children to get some kind of... Um, yeah, increased safety put into place on that road. That really concludes. Thank you. Helen, do you want to go next? Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, James. Um, uh, of course, uh, Caroline and I, and also um, a member of the parish council at Cable, visited with James a few weeks ago to discuss these issues. And I was able to share with James some of the things other schools do to try to manage their parents' parking issues. Um, and actually, right now, there's a, a campaign, a great campaign going on at Rusper Village School, which I know is in um, just outside of Surrey, but. Um, you know, they are doing a, a, a good job of um, putting up posters, uh, asking parents to uh, slow down and be more courteous when they're parking. And I know James is going to take that back. He said he would take that back to the school to see if he could get um, an internal campaign going within the school to, to manage his parents' parking. And I'm also was able to ask our road safety team at Surrey County Council to investigate, which they have done. Um, and uh, they are offered to come and talk to the school and the school children when uh, things are better. In other words, sort of post vaccination, hopefully, uh, where we can actually have proper meetings again. So that will help as well. Um, it doesn't help that the Duke's Head pub is closed at the moment and that the owners don't want the parents parking there anymore. And of course, they've uh, put in a planning application as well to convert that into housing. So that's unlikely. Uh, depending on that outcome, to be available to parents any further. Um, And also, um, the um, school is also currently consulting on closing its infant school, um, and that will probably have an impact as well on parental parking, I would have thought, depending what the outcome of that is. And we are very sad to hear that we might be losing that part of the school, I might add, uh, especially because um, it's one of the very few amenities left to to the village of Bear Green. Um, the, the final thing I would like to say is that the parish council at Capel, which is a very active um, uh, parish council and, and is actually um, holds its own neighbourhood plan, which means it, it, it receives a greater proportion of, of sill money from development, which um, it intends to invest in uh, various issues and infrastructure problems, including highways, 
has recently agreed to fund a feasibility study to reduce the speed and the traffic um, uh, going south on the A24, um, turning into Newtogate Road and also into Old Horsham Road. Now, that feasibility study um, has been agreed, and I know that Surrey's engineers are looking at it, and Marie and Zena's team are looking at it. It may not come up with um, a, a reasonable costed um, solution, but we, we hope, therefore, to be able to make a judgment as to what the outcome of that will be. And that will also, if we can come up with some kind of scheme, affect that. I know the parish council are not keen on introducing a, a new footpath across the recreation ground opposite the school at the moment, um, and um, but they are keen on um, improving the um, pavement alongside the A24. And Caroline's worked hard to get the, um, the county council to improve the um, subway access as well. So things are happening. But the main issue here, I think, is to get a campaign going with your school children and the parents, because they're the ones that are causing the problem. And, you know, they need to be a little bit more careful about the way they park. And if we can provide extra safety regulations outside the school through the County Council's Highways Department, that thank you very much for putting this petition towards the local committee this afternoon. Right. Caroline, do you have anything to add at this point? Um, just just a little bit. In the report on the <laughs> local committee, it did mention that both Helen and myself have been sent um, a report following the highways officers coming down, which was uh, because, in fact, just before the petition was put forward, I, I did mention it and they very kindly came out. Um, and there's a, quite a long list in that report. Now, I sent a copy of that to James. Um, if he can't find it, I can try and find it and send it again. But it does list what they found out on the day, including rather bizarrely, a vehicle trying to go the wrong way down the A24. Um, but no one was hurt. There is an extra bit on the of extra news in respect of the subway and walking in from Bear Green. Um, the Village Hall, run by the Bear Green Community Association, has agreed that the parents can park their cars there um, before and after school and walk. But it is quite a long walk. Um, they would come out the village, go under this subway, which has just been swept um, of all the leaves and um, come out. And then it's only a small walk before they edge the playing field and then they can walk through the playing field. Um, that is as good as we can get because with the loss of the pub if it does go to housing and it's not supported by the parish council going to housing um if it did go to housing they wouldn't even have six parking spaces outside the pub to park on so all in all it's it's not brilliant i i specifically asked if if highways could look at putting in what i would call a parking space going down the newdigate road so that it wasn't such a long gap between um, them coming in from the brickworks and going through because once something comes out, you've got 41 cars in a row, as was mentioned in the report. Um, it's a very long run. And if someone then comes out the other end and it's somebody will get very annoyed. And this was one of the road rage incidents that happened. Um, so I did ask if I was look at putting a white line round about where harvest is so that there would be a break in these house in these cars being parked, allowing for a wiggle. Um, that wasn't recommended. What was recommended was a bit more yellow line right by the school. So I would urge, if possible, that that could be looked at again. But I think that Helen and I have worked really well together on this. And I hope that the school will end up with finding a solution that that. Um, <laughs> can implement um, as well as a little bit of help from Surrey Highways. Right, thank you. Zena, do you want to say anything? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Thank, thank you, um, Mrs. Clark and Councillor Salmon. Um, and of course, to Mr. Bagley for bringing the, the um, petition. Um, I would just like to draw everyone's attention to the um, notes at the back of the petition. Um, so uh, that shows that we are continuing to look 
at um, the issues that had come out of the road safety outside um, schools investigation. Um, we are looking at that parking, um, but there are safety implications um, with formalising that parking, and it would have to come through on the parking review, uh, as I think has been, been noted. Um, the safe, Safer Travel team um, are also going to look to introduce some additional road safety education uh, with the school. And as uh, Mrs. Clack has pointed out, uh, you know, that's really effective to, to bring it from within, if you like, um, so that everybody takes ownership of how, um, how to improve uh, road safety outside of the schools. Um, I don't know if my colleague Duncan Knox wishes to say anything further as his team carried out quite a lot of that investigation, but um, I, I hope that that gives some way to show that we are still continuing on this. There seems to be some strange noises coming on the system. I don't know if everybody else is getting those strange noises, um, but uh, please be, be assured that we, we do take road safety, particularly road safety, outside schools very seriously, and we continue to work with you. Thank you. Duncan? Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, I don't think there's much more for me to add um, from what Zena said, uh, other than to say that, you know, I'm sure that my team will work with the school, uh, Mr Bagley, as much as they can and help you with a school travel plan and road safety education and training uh, that we provide. Uh, we're hoping to introduce pedestrian training course for the first time across Surrey as soon as the COVID pandemic is over and we can get close enough to the children to the help train them across the road. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll look at doing what we can on, on managing the parking situation outside the school. And I think what is proposed is to pro put in a, a gap in that parking to allow a kind of a, a passing point. Uh, so it's not so congested at the very least. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is obviously going to be an ongoing issue. So we shall see what goes on in the future. But I do think we will try everything we can. But obviously, with things like the pub closing, there are obviously things moving literally around us as we, as we speak mm -hmm. as issues. So I think this is going to be an ongoing issue, which everybody needs to work, work on. So hopefully more progress. And can we congratulate you on your appointment to the Weald the School, Thank which you. definitely needs, needs a good head teacher for the long term. So I hope you will be that person. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you very much. For that, Jim. Thank you for your time. Thanks, James. Thank you. Thank you, James. Right. You the second petition is to improve the to, is to install a safe controlled crossing at Chalkbit Lane, Dorking. And we have Amy Fairhurst and Kathy Kyle to present on that. Uh, yes, hello, I'm Amy Fairhurst. Um, thank you for considering our petition to install a safe controlled pedestrian crossing on Chalk Pit Lane. Um, we have generated a PowerPoint because we have gathered quite a lot of information um, over the last couple of um, months as we've been formalising this campaign. Um, so we are Dorking Safe Streets and we are a coalition of um, local parents, educators, business leaders and community partners who want to see a safe place to cross um, on Chalkpit Lane. You can see the map there if you're not sure where it is. It's um, quite central to Dorking. Um, and so uh, we understand that the crossing is already on the um, Mull Valley Infrastructure Delivery Plan um, and also Surrey Highways. Um, so it's, it's really to draw attention to it and to call for um, the spending of the community infrastructure levy payments, which we understand are available um, to make this a reality. So the three pillars of our campaign are, first of all, safety. Secondly, environmental impact um, of making a safer crossing here. And thirdly, our community cohesion angle. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with um, Chalk Pit Lane in Dorking, what is it like to cross Chalk Pit Lane? Um, well, it's the sort of natural bypass to the town centre for vehicles that are travelling from the north to the south and southwest of the town. So you see a lot of industrial traffic come through there as well as the normal residential traffic. 
Um, it's on a hill, so when traffic comes down towards the crossing point, it's gathering momentum. And uh, likewise, when it's heading north out of the town, it's, it's accelerating to go up the hill. So this particular sort of pinch point of pedestrians who are crossing east to west and west to east across the north-south vehicles, is, um, is it can be quite hairy to cross there. Um, so in terms of the safety issues, the, uh, in the officer response to our petition, which we're really grateful for, thank you, um, it states that it, it kind of points out that it's a really tricky junction, that there's, there's not much visibility for traffic. And that's exactly the issue that we see every day when we're, when we're walking this route. Um, and we believe that making a more formal crossing um, would actually make this, it, rather than distracting drivers, it would actually focus their attention on the safety issues for pedestrians there. Um, as you go up Chalk Pit Lane, often cars park on the western side and that makes visibility for pedestrians trying to cross difficult because you can't see the vehicles that are coming down the hill towards you. Um, in terms of the current layout of the crossing, there's an island in the middle um, which encourages pedestrians to cross halfway, but then you kind of get stranded there and you end up in a very, very vulnerable position. And um, I experience quite often when I'm walking with my children that at the end of the school day, you've got children crossing one way from the Ashcombe and we're crossing the other way and you, the, the island gets full. So people end up standing in the road um, or you end up with a back wheel of a bike in the road, which is, is really unsafe. Um, and we feel that a light control crossing would just make the whole thing um, much safer for everybody and stop putting people in vulnerable position. Um, we did some research about... Um, Children, as, as they develop um, neurologically, they're not yet able to judge effectively the speed of, um, of vehicles who are going over 20 miles an hour. So for those older children who would like to travel to school and, and be safe on their way to school, it's, it's, it's putting them in, um, in harm's way every day if we are not taking this seriously. Um, and in the officer response to our petition, it states that there have been no personal injury collisions in the last three years at this point. However, we hear um, on an almost daily basis about near misses, um, which are obviously not formally recorded, but um, in our minds are equally as troubling. Um, in the officer response, um, there was also an issue with the location of the crossing um, because it's less than 20 metres away from an uncontrolled junction. However, um, our understanding of the national guidance is that this is only a suggestion, a guideline, and um, that obviously individual crossings can be put in place um, depending on the geometry of the junction, I believe is the wording that's used. And we believe that there are other um, instances in um, Dorking, like the one I've highlighted there on my map, um, where there are crossings that are less than 20 metres away from uncontrolled junctions. Um, so we've just put together some of the statements from local parents and residents who've contacted us and asked us to bring to you um, their point of view, their experiences of crossing here. I'm not going to speak to all of them because they're there on the PowerPoint and I'm assuming that you will have access to this afterwards. But we've got over 700 people who've been in touch with us who want us to bring this to you. Um, so we wanted to just pull out some of the quotes so that you understand what the experiences are of everybody on a day to day basis. Um, and just looking to the environmental benefits, if we could have a look at that slide, if that's possible, please. Um, so there's um, obviously if we can resolve the safety issue of this crossing, um, then a large number of people in the community are saying that they would obviously really rather leave their cars at home and not bring their cars mm -hmm. to schools. And we've already spoken about safety around schools um, pr prior to the meeting. Um, and, and this was quite a compelling quote here from a lady who contacted us who lives in the north of the area, but who has to travel um, into town with her son. And she would much rather allow him to walk, but she can't because of this um, pinch point, as we've described. Um, we, we've also already spoken and touched on earlier in the meeting, the well-being benefits of obviously being able to walk, travel scoot by scooter or bike to school. And through um, Walk to School Week in October, we... We did some research around what those benefits are in terms of happiness and relaxation and indeed academic achievement for children who are able to um, travel to school by foot. Um, there are two local head teachers who have written to you who are asking for movement on this issue. The um, head teacher of St Martin's Primary School 
um, Jane Goretzka and the head teacher of Dorking Nursery School, Donna Harwood Duffy. They've both taken time in this busy period of their lives to write these letters and support our campaign. Um, and I've just pulled out two quotes from their letters, which I think um, highlight issues um, around sort of family cohesion and also the environmental um, issue that I've already described. Um, in terms of the funding, obviously, um, we appreciate that there's community infrastructure levy funding for a certain amount of money. Um, and in the officer response, it said that um, owing to the crossing having to be moved, it would exceed the budget available. Um, however, what we would really like to see is a formal assessment of whether the crossing would have to be moved. Um, and if it does have to be moved, then we believe that there is a case um, for, for us to access the strategic community infrastructure levy because of the, um, the environmental impact of, of making this crossing safer. And I'm just quoting from um, Surrey County Council's website where they say um, that our success in um, helping to uh, reduce emissions lies in taking action to shift our behaviour and to live more sustainable lives to help safeguard our communities and the environment. And we believe that this could really have an impact on our local community and their ability to shift our behaviour to greener ways of living and leave our cars at home. Um, also, we have um, support from a number of local businesses, including Hello Dorking, who um, have highlighted the issue that, it, that joining up the town with a safe crossing here would help with the community cohesion and access from businesses from east to west of the town. I'm really aware that I'm running out of time, sorry. <laughs> so we've got a number of quotes here, which, um, again, I hope would be made available to you after the presentation, um, just to highlight that we've had um, coverage from the Dorking Advertiser, and we have over 700 signatures on the petition now, which is um, fantastic to see support for the issue. Um, so our recommendations are that we, we would really like to see a more formal feasibility study into this to check that we do actually have to move the crossing. If we do have to move the crossing, whether we can discuss um, and, and elevate it to a strategic issue, please. Thank you. That's very helpful. We will make sure the slides are sent round, everybody, Thank afterwards. You. Um, right. Uh, Hazel, I think you're probably next. Uh, thank you. As the local county councillor, I'm speaking in support of the petition. Dorking Safer Streets um, has run a brilliant campaign, resulting in a large number of signatures requesting a controlled crossing on Chalkbit Lane in Dorking. I, I will not repeat all the points made by the petitioners, as they have presented the case for crossing extremely well. Um, so I will um, concentrate on the um, response by the county council. The County Council's response to the petition highlights the complexities of uh, providing a crossing but does, does not rule it out. And uh, the main hurdle is obtaining funding for the scheme. And although there is insufficient funding from neighbourhood SIL, there is more than enough money available from strategic SIL, which is held by Mole Valley District Council. I believe that the County Council should not neatly accept the District Council's claim that the crossing should not be funded from strategic SIL. My view is that the crossing is a strategic scheme because it would serve children from Westcott, North Homewood, South Dorking, North Dorking and Pixham, which covers more than just one neighbourhood and therefore cannot be regarded as a neighbourhood scheme. I therefore request the County Council, County Council to seek strategic SIL from the District Council to fund the scheme because it is strategic and because the crossing is wanted and needed. And my other suggestion is that the um, County Council uh, look at the possibility of using active travel funding to fund the scheme as well. So I would really appreciate comments from officers on those two suggestions. Many thanks. Thank you. Uh, Caroline, Simon. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I mean, it's, it's a very it's a very dangerous crossing and lots of kids do use it. But I think that there is a bit of a confusion as to what strategic SIL money could be used for because Mole Valley, in my mind, I understand it, it has to be linked to a development to use the strategic funding, which is why the neighbourhood funding is used on the neighbourhood 
subtle element. Um, I don't know if Stephen Cooks is online, but he might have to clarify that. But that was my understanding. And I do, I have actually put active travel funding down because Councillor Watson actually mentioned it. And I do wonder if that could be done. And I would, I would urge that the Surrey County Council do try and find a way to do at least the review of this to see where it could be done as a safe site so that if funding is found, they would be in a position to move it. Right. Stephen Cooksey. Stephen, would you like to go next? Stephen, can you hear me? I think I'm with you now, Chairman. Oh, good. Can I can I say two things? First of all, it was a, an excellent presentation, um, a very impressive presentation, um, putting forward, a, I think, an undisputable case. There is absolutely every reason why there should be a, a crossing um, in, that, a, in that road, and that was described excellently during the course of the, uh, of the presentation. Very impressive. The problem is the funding. Quite clearly, the problem is the funding. Um, it's a shame, for for example, that Surrey County Council um, can't actually find the funding with its, within its own resources to, uh, to, to put in the crossing, but that's the case, and we need to accept that. So far as SIL is concerned, um, they, it's a little bit more complicated than I think was initially suggested. Um, first of all, the, I think the County Council will require a feasibility study, given the question, given the, um, the, the questions that have been raised about where the best site might be. SIL isn't available, and this isn't a local decision, this is a national decision. SIL isn't available for feasibility studies. Therefore, it's important to find a, a source of funding for the feasibility study, which is outside of whatever might be available from SIL. Um, the, uh, the, the SIL funding that currently is, is in hand, um, so far as neighbourhood SIL is concerned, which is, the, um, which is the, the pot of money that could actually be used currently, um, even if all of that was taken on board, and I have to say there are other claims against uh, against um, neighbourhood cell in Dorking, um, even if all of that was taken on board, we'd still be sixty thousand pounds short of the projected cost of the of, of the crossing. Um, now that is that's just a fact, unfortunately. So far as strategic cell is concerned, Caroline was right. Um, we inherited a, ski, a, a, a SIL process which effectively prevented SIL being used for the sort of development that, uh, that that's being suggested, so the sort of crossing that's being suggested here. And it is our intention very shortly to actually change the terms of reference um, in order to allow bids against SIL, against strategic SIL for um, projects of this sort. That's actually in process now, and I'm hoping that come um, that in the the first two or three months of next year, we shall see a report uh, to some recommendations coming to Moor Valley Council that will um, that will permit uh, SIL to be used on a much more a much wider basis. And I think everybody will rec everybody will welcome that. Um, so. Yes, there are, there, there are processes which are in hand, which will help. But so far as I, I can see, the real hurdle is the feasibility study. If, in fact, there was funding for a feasibility study, by the time that feasibility study had produced its results, I suspect that there would be an ability to bid, to bid against strategic sale. But um, the, 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 we, we really need to find the funding for the feasibility study, and that's the real concern. But thank you very much for the presentation. You're on mute, Tim. You're muted, Tim. Sorry, I, Helen, are you... Signaling to speak on this item. Yes, if I may, Chairman. Um, Please. 
a couple of questions that have arisen and I hope something really rather helpful for for this too. So first of all, I'd like to know how much uh, is in the Mole Valley strategic sill pot. I think that's something that would be interesting for all members to hear. And I re see in the report that there's £162,000 available in the neighbourhood sill pot. Um, and surely this could be used to fund a feasibility study as the Capable Parish Council have used their neighbourhood sill money to fund a feasibility study on the um, uh, safety um, scheme for uh, the A24 um, south to Bear Green roundabout. I mean, if they can use it for a feasibility study, then I'm sure some of the £162,000 that is currently being held at Mill Valley District Council could be used to fund a feasibility study, and that would then solve that first issue. After all, this developer's money is our residents' money, really, and should be spent to support what residents want. This uh, petition has been put forward so well. Um, I've really enjoyed the presentation, um, and it makes me feel that we must do all we can to try and find a solution. Thank you. Thank you. Right. If we go, if officers, uh, Zena, do you want to do this with Zankan? Uh, thank you very much, Chairman, uh, and thank you, Amy Fairhurst, like everybody else. That was a really excellent presentation. Um, there's been a lot of work that's gone on perhaps behind the scenes, and I know that Hazel Watson and Tim Hall and um, Stephen Cooksey ha have been working with us to try to find a solution to this conundrum of where do we put um, where, where's a suitable location how do we get funding for feasibility and how do we get funding for delivery so I, I wouldn't want you to feel that it, um, that we haven't been trying to to work towards this and I've been working with uh, my colleague Duncan Knox as well and his team in terms of how we can work um, together to see about the road safety outside schools. We had a, a meeting out there to um, with members of our teams uh, to have a look at the crossing. Um, so it has had some work behind the scenes. It's not um, it's not being ignored. We're absolutely having a look at it. But we have come to this point where there is um, a, a need to put um, uh, to, to have a feasibility study so that we can get the, the right type of crossing in the right location because um, we don't want it to be moved so far away that it's not on the, the path that um, parents and, and children would want to use because then people would start to just cross the road um, away from the crossing, which is something that we've had experience of outside other schools. So we're absolutely in support of what you're um oh, <laughs> thank you whoever's uh, put, putting that up so we are in absolutely in support of having some form of crossing here but i think it i you know i have to let you know that there are risks on um carrying out a feasibility study um that there can be a large amount of cost involved in finding whether it can go forward and then there could still be disappointment that even after all that work, that um, that funding um, doesn't result in in a crossing that you you really want. So I do have to uh, point out that there is some risk on that, but we will continue to look to see if we can find a suitable um, funding source for a feasibility study. Thank you. Thank you. Can I also thank the presenters and their organisation for presenting this. We will send the slides around to everybody. This is obviously a very serious issue. It's obviously also from our pre-work more technically difficult than I think any of us guessed. Um, but we do need to try and find the funding and it would be very sensible if the various the district council could actually look through the various seal and other funding, try and find the right right um, way forward. And it would be very helpful. Um, Hazel? Um, yes, I really appreciate it if something could, could respond to my point about the possibility of active travel funding, um, whether that might be um, a way forward, and also um, a 
uh, as a commitment from the Cab Council to um, to pursue the strategic still funding, as uh, it would appear that the District Council is changing it, the rules um, to enable it to, uh, to be accessed uh, more easily. Um, and if there are any other suggestions for um, accessing uh, feasibility funding, but my understanding was that if strategic funding was available, but um, that the feasibility study could be funded out of uh, from that source, uh, strategic sale. Um, so uh, comments on those points would, would be really appreciated. Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Thank you, thank you, um, Mrs. Watson. Um, it, is a, it is a complex issue, and the funding it is also quite a complex um, issue. Uh, in, in sort of broad terms, um, the active travel funding um, it's very similar to SIL in the in the respect that you have to put forward a um, a bid essentially for for that funding, and to have that you have to have a scheme that's um, in broad terms already been shown uh, could be delivered. So it needs to have in broad terms some feasibility. I think actually the, the funding issue is that feasibility. Now, if you've got strategic SIL, you still need to have a feasibility and you can't use that feasibility, um, you can't use that um, strategic SIL funding for feasibility. But if you have carried out feasibility from a separate source and it goes ahead, then you can, if you like, back pay it. I know that's really complex, and, and, I, and I'm trying to, to do it as simply as I can. But in the legislation, um, you can't use that fill money for feasibility because uh -huh. there's that risk on it. Hmm. So we still have somewhere further to go with this. Um, I'm also somewhat aware that both councillors Cooksey and Watson are actually part of the decision making in the district council on the SIL money. So before we get ourselves into terrible knots and the fact that you're actually predetermining yourself a decision you're about to make, I think we probably ought to bring this to a halt at this point and let everybody try and regroup and try and work out which is the way forward, what is at, which is accessible funding and which isn't, because I think that's probably the way forward, isn't it? But uh, can I thank the petitioners very much for their very impressive petition? Thank you, everybody. At this point, we will move to item six, Highways Forward Programme. See you now. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I hope everybody's had the opportunity to have a look at the report. Um, I draw everyone's attention to um, page 11, uh, which determines that uh, subject to final agreement through Cabinet, there'll be £240,400 uh, <clears throat> worth of capital funding available to the local committee, which it is suggested would be divided as um, 23400 to be for each um, county member for capital maintenance works, um, that there will be 76,000 for the forward programme of ITS schemes, and that remainder of the potential 100,000 for ITS schemes would result in there being 4,000 um, for each county member to fund either a top up to that capital maintenance or to be um, identified for an ITS scheme. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that um, anybody may have on this. And I draw your attention to Appendix 1, which shows the forward programme proposed schemes. Thank you. Any questions? Or can we agree this? If I agree with this, thank you very much. Agreed. Agreed. Good. That's agreed. Right. Thank which means we 
Agreed. Great. Thank you. Which moves to item seven, speed limit assessments, which we have three together. A29, Iron Ockley Road, Bear Green, State Street, Bear Green, 243, Kingston Road, Leatherhead, and 217, Rygate Road, Hookwood. Duncan. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we've um, identified that the A243 and the A29 um, have had a, uh, a history of collisions, uh, which we feel could be uh, addressed through a reduction in speed limit. Uh, this is a result from discussions that we've had at our road safety working groups, which I described earlier in the meeting, uh, where police and uh, area highways colleagues uh, take part as well. To inform that decision, we've looked at the casualties and the pattern of casualties and also the existing speeds and see whether that those um, comply with our speed limit policy, which has the important principle that simply reducing a speed limit using signs alone won't necessarily make much difference if the existing speeds are very much higher than the desired new speed limit. And in these cases, um, the speeds are closer to 40 miles per hour or close enough to 40 miles per hour that if we think a, a new 40 mile an hour speed limit will be viable and successful in managing the speeds down to a lower level. And that will result in a reduced risk of collision and the reduced consequences. We're also looking at the A217 where it extends uh, from the Rygate and Banstead boundary uh, south of the Westvale Park um, uh, roundabout where it, it starts off being 40 miles per hour and as you head south it has a section of 50 miles per hour before it goes back down to 40 miles an hour again in Hookwood. What we'd like to do there is convert the 50 mile an hour stretch that's currently sandwiched between two 40s to be 40 as well so you have a consistent speed limit along the whole length there. We have already proceeded to advertise that one, uh, which was a slight mistake of, on my part in that I should normally ask your permission to advertise. But um, so apologies for that. But um, what we would like to do is when we get the results of the consultation to present those to you and uh, see if you'd like to proceed with that speed limit change as well. The Rygate and Banstead local committee have been consulted on that uh, previously. Uh, and they, they were happy to proceed with advertising that uh, section of speed limit. So um, I'd be very happy to take any questions. Well, you've got two, so that's good. So Councillor Caroline Salmon. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm absolutely thrilled on the Oxley Road one. This is such a dangerous road. I did a crash uh, analysis of it myself and I was horrified. And then we had two immediately almost after I'd done it and one was fatal. So I'm really pleased to see that going through. There is a point in the road where you double back. Um, it's almost right in the middle, actually, um, where there is a sign that says actually that the advisory sign is 20. And please don't take that away because um, it may be an advisory sign, but it does slow people down on what is a much sharper bend than it looks. Um, I, I hope this can be done with as a priority and the advertisement can be put out a, ASAP um, and it can be instigated um, in the next year uh, as soon as you can manage to put signs up because it's absolutely essential. The, the other ones both look essential to me as well, but this one because it's on my patch and because it's something that I have actually been pushing for um, and spent a lot of time analysing the crash map details myself, I think it's just a really, really brilliant thing it's going in. So fully support it. Thank you. Noted. Okay. Helen. Thanks, Tim. Um, huge thanks, Duncan. Uh, it's great to see a plan coming together, um, both for these two schemes, which are in my county division and the one which is in my um, uh, district uh, ward. Um, I, I think that um, a lot of residents will be um, very satisfied and, and the parish councils will be very much in support of this going forward. And they particularly are the instigators of a lot of the times for these sort of studies uh, and requests through to your team. So it's great news. Thank you very much indeed. I very much support it. Thank you. Thank you. Noted. And can I say from the other end of the district that uh, both the southern schemes look very sensible, as you say, but I'm also grateful for the A243 because I have to admit, I hadn't realised that we had different bits of speed limit on different bits of the road. 
and we have had a series of experiences there which we could do without. So uh, I think that's, that's a very positive thing as well. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. So, so I think we're probably all supportive. So can we agree these? Absolutely. Agreed. 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 Yes, agreed. Good. Agreed. Agreed. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right, item eight, recommendations tracker. Um, anything, please note, we note that. And then item nine, the forward plan. Sorry, sorry, Tim, Hazel has her hand Oh, up. Hazel, sorry. Hazel, sorry. Actually, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's under the tracker. Um, it's to do with the um, parking review. And um, I'm not sure whether it's under the decision tracker or it's um, the next item or the forward plan. But uh, really want to get some idea as to uh, when the uh, parking review uh, decisions will be implemented. Um, but it may, maybe it's the next item. So uh, apologies if I've got that wrong. I think Chairman. Yes, Chairman, I, I'm led to believe that it's actually the Chairman that's holding this up. Yes, we have one of the problems. Yes, we I have one of the problems. Officer, and the officer told me he's still waiting for you for you to yes. come back with your response to his email. And he asked me that I subtly, as I always do, <laughs> mention it in today's meeting. We have had one or two problems with the bits in Leatherhead, yes, unfortunately. We said it'd be more controversial than anybody bargained on. No, no, OK. So we are working on that. So, yes, yeah, hopefully. I'm with Hazel future. on this. You know, we want yes, to move this forward. We have indeed. And uh, we are still, we are hopefully the next week fixing the last of the leather bits, which turned out to be much more controversial than I think any of us ever gathered. Um, partly because the district council changed something in the midst of it, or we discovered. But we are working on it. So that is en route. But, uh, any, not, any idea of timing? Um, well, I would but... hope, uh, well, I think the idea is the implementation in, in early spring. So yeah. uh, as soon as possible on that basis. Thank you. That's the chairman when I was led to believe by him um, when he, I spoke to him yesterday. That's good. That's good. Great. Right. So, and then the forward plan. Do we, members have any comments, suggestions? Please send them in. Um, we will have an education briefing, as I said, about, about education planning in the near future. That's probably come to the informal, I think. Um, we'll go from there. Right. At that point, we will bring the meeting to a close. Can I thank everybody for their contributions? Uh, the meeting closes at 15.23 and our next meeting is Wednesday 24th of February. So can Sorry, I wish Chairman. A Sorry, I, I was turned off. Oh, when you said education, are we looking at this schools issue that you, myself and Claire are interested in? Yes. Yeah, okay. and, every and everybody else is interested in it, it seems. Oh, right, okay. and, and school places as well in the That's south. exactly the point. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank the briefing you. will probably be at the informal, I think, is the yeah. plan. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, everybody, have a nice Christmas. Yes, thank you very much, everybody. And, uh, Happy Christmas, everyone. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas.